Okay, so hi, my name is Catherine. Um, this is my introduction to aging assignment for older adult health um, clinical. So uh, my personal definition of health is mainly just having a good quality of life and taking care of your health before it becomes a problem. Um, so the seven elements of the wellness-based model paradigm consist of biological, functional, environmental, psychological, spiritual, social, and um, around that would be culture. So um, biological wellness consists of promoting optimal health and prevention of illness. So an example of this would be um, you have a patient that suffered a stroke and they're going to be referred to physical therapy to help them regain um, strength in their weakened side or area. Um, this um, physical therapy would then provide that um, biological wellness that a patient needs. Um, then we have functional wellness. Um, this is providing care and support to a patient when they need it. Um, so for example, allowing a patient in a nursing home who may take a super long time to get dressed, yet still allowing them to do that on their own even though, yes, maybe I could do it and it would be a lot quicker, just going ahead and saying, okay, this patient can do it. It may take longer, but it's their, it would benefit their functional wellness to allow them to do that and keep their independence. Um, environmental wellness is um, individual to each person. Um, for example, you have a patient living in the city. Um, they're, you have, if, you have any person that's living in a city, they're going to be exposed to more secondhand smoke, air pollution. They may have um, limited access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and all these are really factors that can lead to poor health. So like as a nurse, we need to advocate for our patients and find resources that can um, kind of not necessarily change the environment because we're nurses, we can't quite change all that, but um and then we have psychological wellness um with this one you're really going to be noticing any cues um that may be suggestive suggestive that the patient may um, have impaired cognition um or maybe mood altered mood whatever um and then looking to find solutions and improving those outcomes. So for example, if you have a patient living in a nursing home that um, is suffering from dementia um, and she believes she's staying in a hotel and um, if I were to approach her and say, no, this is not a hotel, you have dementia, you're living in a nursing home, that would not be beneficial to her, that would cause her more stress, more agitation, um, and just not make her pleasant versus um if I just go along with it and say okay yes um maybe not agreeing that she's in a hotel but not saying she's not in a hotel um then we have spiritual wellness um so that's the idea that one's life has meaning or a purpose so um will that be the belief of a god um multiple gods whatever it may be um, and just kind of supporting a patient, um, no matter what their beliefs are or my beliefs are, I should support their beliefs. Um, so, for example, you have a patient who um, may be coming near end of life or maybe just is having surgery and they're nervous um, and they ask to speak to a chaplain. I would say, okay, I'm going to go call you for a chaplain and they will come talk to you. Um, and just allowing that patient, um, that spiritual wellness. Um, our sixth one is social wellness, which consists of facilitating activities with others. So social, I mean, we're social beings. Um, so an example is maybe you have a patient in a long-term care facility and you want to encourage them um, to come out and play bingo on Tuesday afternoons and maybe encourage them to come out in the cafeteria and eat their meals in the cafeteria with a group of people they always sit with, they can build a bond with, communicate with. Even um, social wellness could even be um, having service dogs visit the uh, nursing home or long-term care facility often. Um, just because like we're 
we're social creatures. We need um, that bond and communication to thrive. Um, and then lastly, we have culture. So um, as a nurse, promoting all six of the elements that I, we just talked about, um, they make up the last element, which is culture. So supporting all the elements within patient care leads to best possible outcomes and make up the culture. Um, so next we have the three levels of prevention. Um, those include primary, secondary, and tertiary. So primary prevention would be, say, um, we have older adults. We're going to recommend, hey, let's get your flu vaccine. Let's get your pneumonia vaccine. Um, maybe a shingles vaccine if you've had chicken pox, which most older generations, um, right now have had chicken pox. So, um, getting those vaccines to prevent um, illness or um, potential diseases um, in our um, older generations, our aging population. So next we have secondary prevention. So um, a basic one for this would be a woman that's um, hit 40 years old. It's time for them to go get a mammogram. Um, and letting the patient know, hey, you're 40 now, um, we recommend getting a mammogram. It just screens for breast cancer um, and helps identify early stages of it to promote um, optimal health um, and better health outcomes overall. Um, so the last one is tertiary. Um, an example of this one would be starting physical therapy um, for a patient who suffered a stroke. Um, to allow them to um, become more independent or regain strength so that they can feed themselves or that they can um, maybe get up out of bed and walk um, or even teaching them to use a walker um, or cane uh, just stuff like that uh, would really be a tertiary um, prevention so the promotion of healthy aging is different between all individuals um, However, as a nurse, noticing and evaluating what each individual needs to promote healthy aging will lead to the best patient outcomes. For example, if a patient has suffered a stroke and is left with left-sided weakness, um, we may encourage them to follow a specific medication regimen and attend physical therapy to promote health as the patient ages. Um, so the factors that have the most significant influence on health um, and aging, um, I would say are smoking, diet, nutrition, exercise, stress, and um, environmental factors. The book um, really does go into um, and talks about how smoking is one of the major causes of um, death actually in the United States, as well as a lack of um, exercise leading to um, poor cardiovascular health, etc. So, um, for myself, I expect to be in um, relatively good health by the time I'm 70 years old. I exercise three to four times a week, um, and this includes cardio, um, lifting weights. Um, I work every part of my body. Um, I don't smoke or vape. Um, I have no current chronic illnesses. I try to get around six to eight hours of sleep um, most nights. Obviously, I'm in nursing school, so I try to get six to eight hours of sleep at night. Um, I eat a well-balanced diet, including fruits, vegetables, protein, healthy fats. Um, just, I have that well-balanced um, because nutrition is so important to a good functioning body. Um, and I only drink a couple times a month and I don't drink heavily or anything. Um, so by the time I'm 70 years old, the year will be 2071, which is crazy to think that that year even exists eventually. But <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I eat a well-balanced diet of fruits and vegetables, fats, um, healthy fats, carbs, um, as well as working out three to four times a week. So I feel that um, I'll be a healthy weight and will have a decreased risk of de developing diabetes and heart disease. Um, the book um, Towards Healthy Aging um, kind of talks about how um, or states that adoption of healthful eating patterns and exercise has been shown to improve Markers of Age-Associated Diseases um, is located on page 184 if you're curious. Um, 
I'm also not a smoker greatly, um, which greatly increases my health and aging. Um, the book, the same book also states that cigarette smoking is the leading cause of death, leading cause of preventable death in the United States. So yeah, thank you for listening.